building economic empowerment and resilience in our constituencies. Let's talk. Let us discuss. People centered. Constituency that community focused. Be your host. Building and economic center. empowerment Everyone's and resilience in our constituencies. Let's talk. Let us discuss. Constituency Vibes with me, your host, Ricky Alexander, every Wednesday on Sky FM 93.1 from 8 p.m. Today, Wednesday, March 31st, where we bring you another interesting and fascinating program. We have a wonderful guest, as always, this evening, and we're going to be having a fascinating and interesting discussion. And of course, this is where we start by going into our housekeeping rules so that we keep the dialogue and the communication clean and safe. Thou shall not use language that is deflammatory insultive, offensive, or slanderous to the host, guests, or public officials, or persons in general. Thou shalt not listen to thyself on the radio as it may cause feedback. Thou shalt practice good etiquette when expressing your viewpoint. Thou shalt choose to identify the area that thou art calling from. Thou shalt respect the views of other callers without making insults and abuses with reference to previous callers, even though you may disagree with what the caller has to say. And thou shalt be gentle and civil at all times. This is a program, Constituency Vibes, where we focus on sustainable develop development in a people-centered way to deliver progress and growth throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia constituency by constituency. Your government, headed by the Honorable Alan Chastney, Prime Minister, and his team of dedicated men and women of passionate intensity, they are steadfast, for the vision, commitment, and relentless pursuits to usher in a new and progressive, a different and forward moving St. Lucia. My guest this evening, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose, was Minister in the Ministry of Tourism with responsibility for culture and creative arts. And more aptly tonight, she is the UWB candidate for Castries East. And of course, so we're going to cast resist is in the house tonight. And of course, we're going to be discussing and talking about the developments, the transformation, and of course, what is going to happen. The major communities in cast is uh, Bocage. So Bocage is in the house. Tiroche, Shabot. You have um, Wascolans, Independent City, Entripo, Bacatel, Marsha, Touj, Arendel Hill, Bishop Gaps, Pavi, Wakache and Rock Hall. The, our guest tonight, and therefore, therefore, as well. Okay. Our guest tonight, a woman of passionate intensity, a woman of commitment, a woman of focus, a mother, a professional, a sportswoman, a community person, a community activist, a helper, a friend, the kind of person with a vision to ensure that Castries East in particular, and St. Lucia in general, begins to grow, develop, and move forward. When we talk about a city within a city, she attended the Methodist Infant and Primary School, the St. Lucia Seventh-day Adventist Academy, the A-Level College, University of West Australia. Uh, so she's a product of Australia. <laughs> city University of New York, Lehman's College in the Bronx. So she's a product of, of, of New York as well. Is this, you know, this whole issue about whether you're a product of something. And as we have said, you, we are an individual, you're a collective sum of your parents, your bringing, your, where you attend school, where you go, your church, all of that, you know, interacts and shapes and mold, you know, who you are. And of course, you will hear a lot about um, Mrs. Bell Rose, of course. And um, listeners, let us welcome our wonderful guests tonight. 
Mrs. Belrose, the UDLP candidate for Castries East. Welcome, Mrs. Belrose, to Constituent Survivors. Thank you very much, Ricky, and um, it's a pleasure to be here. And of course, thank you to all your viewers for having me in the living rooms and, of course, on re in Radio Land. Now, I'm a little uncomfortable with the mask. It's two of us in here. There's a lot of space. Can I remove the mask? Certainly, certainly. Okay. We're keeping our social distance. Oh, it's a special mask, the bell rules. Yeah. See? <laughs> bell was. Yes, yes, bell was. Indeed, of course. So, listeners, this is your program, Constituency Vibes, on 93.1 FM on GDV TV, Flow 115, Channel 115, where we bring you and inform you of the happenings, the transformation, the development program, and the agenda of the government in terms of transformation, transforming St. Lucia, and creating, indeed, a new St. Lucia. Mrs. Bellrose, yeah. beyond the name, who is Mrs. Bellrose? Yeah. Talk to us. Tell who us is who, Mrs. who is Mrs. Bellrose. Wow. So that's a heavy loaded question. Um, well, Mrs. Belarus, um, before I was Mrs. Belarus, I was Fortuna Emmanuel, um, better known as Deborah in the community I grew up, um, which is Lastikin. Um, I'm the only girl in a family of six boys. I, I always say this. Um, but my dad and my mom parted ways when I was five months old. And so I have another family um, that my dad went on. He had seven children. So I'm with my father. I'm girl number three, girl number two, girl number two. You know, there's so many of them, girl number two, and there are three after me. Um, but with my mom, where I grew up, in the home I grew up, I grew up as the only girl among six boys. Um, I think the entire neighborhood will recall that because I mean, I was the only girl. I had a very um, stern stepfather. Um, and of course, my dad, who lived in England, um, contributed immensely to my education and my life. You know, he literally funded my schooling right through. I went to private school. Um, so it made it a lot, you know, um, easy on my mom in terms of secondary education. Um, I went, of course, to the Methodist school and then, of course, moved on to the St. Lucia SD Academy, which was really, for my mom, the best choice for, for her daughter, you know, um, at that time. And so, yes, that's who I was. And in SDA, we didn't get a chance to play sport, but being a sports person as I was, we found ways, you understand, to play for the school and, and represent, you know, on occasions when we had a principal who was accommodating you know, um, to the value of sport. So that worked well for me. And of course, um, I found my love in tennis um, in the late 70s when the Ministry of Youth and Sports at the time, um, underneath the leadership of Andrew Magoa, um, brought a coach into St. Lucia for tennis. And she spotted the talent and, of course, awarded me a tennis racket at the end of the training stint. Um, in 1978 or 79, about. And that's how I got into the field of tennis, which I got an opportunity to represent my country um, in, in lawn tennis. I played a lot of netball too, um, but I never got a chance to represent St. Lucia. But when I went to Australia, I played you know, um, in the league in Australia. Um, and of course, it was really good. When I came back, I was called the national trials, but never really went because the dynamics with the team was not right you know, um, at the time. And so a few of us chose to stay away you know, um, from the environment um, at the time. Um, so basically growing up, sports person, the playing field, Mindo Philip Park, Marshall Rounds, that's our backyard. Um, we were there as children every day, you know, every day, every day, you know, um, rehearsing, practicing our craft and playing cricket, playing football with the boys, um, and of course, enjoying track and field and just keeping our bodies in good shape, you know, um, as youngsters. Um, and of course, conquering our area, running around the road, the, the neighborhood. Um, and I think everybody in my neighborhood knew me, <laughs> if anything. And I guess it's no, it's no, it's no surprise um, that I'm here today because I was always a very vocal person, um, no nonsense as well, um, and always trying to be fair, you know, in every situation. So this is who I was as a youngster. Fortunately for me, I got a chance to go on to higher education. So I went to the, um, it was called the A-level college then. Um, and then I went on to work within the Ministry of Sports. I got an opportunity there as a sports person, uh, working as a youth and sports officer. And I think from there, I've really blossomed. I blossomed as an individual and got quite a few opportunities through the government of St. Lucia, whether it's Labour Party or UWP, as a citizen of this country, I got an abundance of opportunities to improve myself as an individual. Um, and so I'm a great product of St. Lucia. I take pride in saying that anywhere. Um, and also, I'm a great product of the Commonwealth because I did receive a Commonwealth scholarship to go on to Australia 
um, to further my studies in, in physical education and health. And of course, I got to interact and engage. And you know, while we were in Australia, I keep saying that we have, while we were in Australia as ambassadors for the Caribbean, there were about six of us um, in Australia. Um, we had constant engagements with our cricketers when they came. Um, and so, as citizens of the, of the West Indies, you know, when the cricketers came to town, it was exciting for us because they embraced us, you know, to the extent that people like me were saying, well, Viv Richard is my cousin. And you understand? Just to get the crowd going, you know, um, in, in Australia. So it was good, and Australians embraced us. You know, we left St. Lucia, went over there, but we found families, families today that we still have connections with, you know, and I'm still in touch with my Australian people. So, you know, it's lifelong relationships that were, that were formed. Um, and of course, when I left Australia, um, I was about 24 years old when I finished that program, came back home, and of course settled in because um, my husband decided, my boyfriend at the time, decided he was not going to let me go again for such a long time. But we did settle down, and of course eventually had, you know, two children, two boys before. Um, but then the hunger in me, you know, to continue to improve the person, you know, um, the, the desire to get out. Um, and also with the government of St. Lucia restructuring the service and trying to ensure that people had the qualifications for the various positions. Um, it literally drove me, you know, to go out, left my kids behind, went over to New York to finish up my studies, get my degree, you know, and then come back home. You know, so that paid off well, it paid off, you know, well, I did well at school. I represented the school in tennis. We won the championships that year um, in the Hudson Valley Championships in, in, the, New York, in the New York area. Um, and of course, I also was a recipient of an academic scholarship in my last in my last year um, as well. So, all in all, Wonderful. for me, it has been it has been great. I think um, the opportunities for sport has been tremendous for me. Uh, by the time I was 25, you know, I had gone halfway around the world already because of my involvement in sport. Not only as an athlete, and as an athlete, it was just the region, but as a as an administrator for sport, there were ample opportunities you know, um, across the globe for us. And so I think I grew up very quickly in terms of understanding people, the dynamics, the environment. And I also am a very settled and composed person. And I'm not intimidated by anyone. I'm not threatened by anyone. Um, Whether they're from cash resist or not. Whether well, cash resist, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just have to look at the people and assess them and you can see what it is that needs to be done, you understand, to win them over too. Because I believe we need to win Mr. Philippe on our side too. I think at this point in time in his career, it's important for him to understand when you've served your time and you've done your time. And if you're satisfied that you did good time, you would be too happy to let over to somebody you know has a passion for community, has a passion for sport development, which is key in that community, and has a passion for people. So I think it's important for him to recognize that and decide I should pack my bag. But if he wants to fight and challenge, I'm the best person for it too. Bring it on. So bring it on. <laughs> Wonderful. So, so that's where we are. And so, um, yes, yeah, so for schooling, yes, I, I was able to go through the processes um, very well. And of course, graduating with the highest honors um, within the school setting, summa cum laude, um, you know, with my degree. And then, of course, I did some further studies with um, Leicester University. I did a postgraduate certificate. Um, all again, I was a mother again. I had another baby, and so it was a little difficult for so me. So you're also a product of London? I'm a product of London. Oh, well, that's for London. My dad lived in London for 40 years, and I was there almost every year since 1985. So, you know, I had the opportunity to travel. Travel is part of my blood. Um, and in, interestingly, um, I remember as a student in Form 1 in the St. Lucia SD Academy, there was a book we did called... Um, around the world in 80 days with Phileas Fogg and these characters, right. if you recall. Yeah, I recall. And as a youngster, I was always fascinated by the book and the story, and I always wanted to travel. And I built that love for travel, you understand, listening and, and, and hearing the experiences, and um, reading the experiences of Phileas Fogg. And so for me, travel was always a big part of my life, and it still is, you know, and you don't know how, how tough it has been for me. Um, it has really been difficult. We've had fam we have family abroad. Two of my kids live abroad, my grands live abroad, and so it's, 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 really, it's really tough, you know, um, being here and being away from them. But the good Lord has given us the video chat and modern technology, and so we can talk to them on a regular basis. So that Absolutely. eases the burden, you know, of, and the pain of not seeing them, you know, um, in person. But, um, yeah, that's, that's who I am, you know. A, a product of St. Lucia, proud St. Lucian. Everywhere you go, I defend my country, you know, to, to the bone. 
Um, I, and I don't just like my country like some people say they like St. Lucia. I love St. Lucia. Absolutely. And I will do nothing, you understand, to destroy the beauty, you understand, and the name of my country anyway. You know, I think we have a responsibility as citizens to protect the image of our country. And so we will not engage in any banter, you understand, um, disrespecting, you know, our country and our leaders at any time. And this is how I measure people. I measure you by the content of your, your discussion, you know, with people and people who are not St. Lucians, you understand, about the quality, you know, of your people and your country. So it's very important that we understand that, you know, if you're a patriotic St. Lucian, you would protect your country. You would fight in your country, but when it comes to being outside, you know, you have to respect the fact that that is your country, you belong, you know, and even if it's a prime minister you're not happy with, but that is not the world's business. That is your business on the inside. And you have to learn how to manage relationships, you know, which is the essence of us being on earth as human beings. Managing those relationships, not just in the home, but also in terms of how we relate nationally. And, 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 and respecting your country is a big part, you know, of all of that as well. Listeners, you're on 93.1 FM, um, Sky FM, GDV TV on, on Facebook as well, and Flow, Channel 115, and you're on Constituency Vibes, my guest tonight, Mrs. Fortuna Belrose, our UWP candidate for Castries um, East. Um, Mrs. Belrose, I mean, we hear from you, we see the passion, the dynamism, mm -hmm. that love for people, that mm -hmm. love for community, as a community activist, wanting mm -hmm. to see the community grow, mm -hmm. having served in various capacities. Yes. Um, as Shakespeare would say, what doff brought you to, the, <laughs> to the, your interest in politics? In the politics. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, uh, the people. You know, I, I, I want to bring it back to the people because I was happily retired, you understand, in, um, in 2015, November. Happily retired, and I must say so. But at the same time, when I decided I was retiring, or when I, when I had to retire, because it was compulsory anyway, you get to 55, you get out <laughs> of the government service, you know. Um, and so I was happily retired, to be honest with you. But then the people came. You know, I remember James coming. Um, um, James Polius came to me. You, but James came to me. You know, um, Rock came to me. There are a number of people from the community who came, seeing that Belrose had the passion, she had the drive, she had a history of success, and, and we've not even gone into my history yet, in terms of the things that we've done and we've achieved, but they knew who I was. And I think they were looking for somebody to be competitive um, against Mr. Philippier in Castries East. They wanted better representation. They felt that as, as, as citizens of the community, they were not being given a fair share, you know, of the pie um, in, in that constituency, and it was important for them, and they came to me. And so my response was, that's, not, that's a little difficult for me. And even when I told my husband, he was saying to me, no, 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 if you get involved in politics, then you'll get a divorce from me. He was very, very clear you know, that it would be a divorce. And he went telling all his friends, if she does make that move, I'm divorcing her boy. No way, I stay there. <laughs> but I must say, when, when, when we really had that discussion and I agreed to go, you know, he was there right there by my side because he understands what it is because this is a sportsman too, you know, and it's always important for you to have people who share your values, you know, um, to be your partner, you know. And so he shared the value, the passion, and the desire for the fight, you know, um, with me. And so it was easy for that part, you understand, to unfold. So I'm really happy that I, I, I took that opportunity and I'm really heartened, even more heartened, by the response that the citizens of the community, you know, um, are, 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 are given to me. I think it's really a lot of love um, and you can see in the relationships, you know, you walk around the community and people are prepared to give you. You know, I'm not one people are looking to take from. I think the, the, the old mentality of people wanting to take, take, take from the politician, that does not exist for me in cash disease. People who come to me genuinely come with an issue and we work it through with them. But I think generally I find people are receptive and willing to embrace and willing to give. You know? And so for me, it's a lot of love that I see you know, from the constituents. Um, and I think what I really want to do as representative is to ensure that I represent them in a way that we will raise the bar with respect to representation. Earlier on in the week, I heard Mr. Pierre talked about being there, done that. No, it cannot be being there, done that. I think it's important for you to recognize that the people are there consistently, and your job is to continuously elevate, you understand, and work 
at ensuring that they get there. So, so being there done, that means you're tired. You know, it's, it's, you, they, 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 there's nothing new coming out that you, you, you're prepared to, 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 to do. Um, so I think the honorable thing to do, you know, is to say to the people, well, you know, let me take my bow, you know, at this point in time. That, that's what I think, you know, when you hear people talk that way and sort of um, disrespect the fact, you know, that you have a big role of representing them, you know, and it's not just repre representing them, representing their issues, making a case for them, writing the letters to the responsible agencies for them, because a lot of our politicians believe they can just talk, 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 and then it will just happen. Only God can do that. You understand? So as a politician and as a representative, what you have to do is to sit down and nurture your nice little letter and send it into the various agencies to get the support for your people. That's how things work in the real world. You understand? And so it's important for him to know that he has to do that. And not doing that places the burden on the people are coming. When I interview them, it's like, well, Miss, you get that done? Yeah, a simple letter. It makes a difference. And no discrimination. You deal with everybody mm -hmm. who comes to you as a representative. You cannot select who you deal with. You understand? So that is, that is why I'm there. I think I really want to help the people raise the level of the representation that they've received. I think Castries East um, is not a seat that is used to being in opposition. You know, they're always in government. Most times they are in government, and I think the people are hungry to be in government. Because when you look at what is happening across the country, Ricky, across the country, you go to Soufre, you go to Choiselle, you go to Beaufort, you go to everywhere, you see major developments happening. The transformation you is clear. You see the transformation is clear. And I know, you know, and if there's one thing I know, and I keep saying so to them when they come to me, I know that my prime minister is hungry to put his hands into the Marshall constituency. And he wants to show that what was not done in 25 years, or what they do not see or cannot even recall in 25 years, you know, happens within the first two, three years you know, of, of the UWP reign in Castries So there's a lot of work to be done. Um, we're not about bringing people down. I think we're about elevating people. People serve their time. I just believe it's a different time. It's COVID season. It's a different time. It's a different type of leadership. It's a different type of engagement. That is where we should be headed as a citizen. Clearly, when, we, when I hear you speak like that, you're speaking to the politics of care, the mm -hmm. ethics of care that directs oh, yes. attention to the need and responses yes. of people, mm -hmm. and building relationships. Yes and creating the kind of governance and stewardship that really yes. benefits the citizenry Abs of this absolutely. country. So that is what our, the UWP politics is about. And, yes. you, and you bring that out quite, 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 quite Absolutely. Clearly. And you know, I, I keep hearing people saying about the UWP doesn't care. My government, I'll be part of a government that doesn't care. You must be crazy. Because as a sports person, you want to know that the leaders that are leading you are people who really care about you. You understand? You've got to fight on that field of play. And so you need to ensure that you have the support system there for you to enable you. And so our responsibility as leaders is always to create the environment for our athletes to do well, for our people to do well. And that is my role. I think throughout my career in sport, that has been the fundamental role that I've played, trying to make sure amidst all the fighting going on that you have an environment where the athletes are happy. That is the role that Mrs. Bellrose played. I was president of the Netball Association, and that is what we did. That was perhaps the best time in the girls' career. You know, they had. We were the best team other than Jamaica. Jamaica was the only team beating us in 2001, 2002, with me as president. And so, and even with the Olympic Committee, you see the achievements. But the athletes did not just achieve. You needed to have systems in place to ensure that they got there. Tell us and about so, the achievements. Well, which achievements? Generally, in terms of oh, various, areas, oh. various areas in your endeavors. <laughs> well, many, many, many achievements. Um, in, in terms of the Netball Association, I was president from, 2000, from 1997 to 2001 or two thereabout. And during that time, we were able to move you know, from about seventh or eighth place way up to second place. Jamaica was the only team that was beating us. And that year, they beat us. To be honest with you, our ace player was in Cuba studying, and the Cuban authorities did not give us this young lady. And for me, you know, that, that hurt my heart, because I knew if this child was here, the synergy we had with these girls, you know, would have blown them, blown the Jamaicans away. And Jamaica was scared. I'm telling you, they came there frightened, you know, but we didn't have our star girl, and so they didn't know until that day. But in any case, we lost. So, so that's for one in terms of the netball, and I think every netballer in that era can speak to the great relationship we had with them. Because it was about putting the players at the fore. Now, I come from know? a community of netball, eh? Yes. All right, Mylene George. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, 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 yes
Um, you also had um, Francis. There's a young uh, Francis lady who worked at the bank. You know, but you've had some good players. Helena Rennie, yeah. you know, um, you've had some real good players down there. Adela Paul was not a, a, a thing, but she was a good athlete, athlete you know. as well. And that's somebody I'm always wondering, where is she? You know, I understand that she's in Sufre. So, but, but in terms of sports, yes, we've done that. Um, in terms of the Olympic Committee, we've done extremely well. I took over the reins of leadership in the Olympic Committee in 2013. Richard Peterkin was there. He had served for 20 years with him, doing all the best work, yes. But by 20, 2015, we began to realize the success from the work that was being done. So in 2015, we won our first gold medal, you know, um, at the Pan Am Games. And then we had a repeat of that medal by Laverne in 2019. Um, we won gold medals again at the Commonwealth Games um, in 2018. We won um, gold medals at the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas, which said Musha should have hosted. You know, we were on this, on this, on this ring for hosting the 2017 um, youth games in, in St. Lucia, but unfortunately, because the stadium was a hospital, it was a little difficult for us to be able to pull that through, you know, as a country. But the youngsters did not let us down. People like Julian Alfred had been working hard. Um, in fact, I recall her coach coming to me, Mr. 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 Modest, Cupboard Modest, coming to me as I was then PS of Sports, and saying to me, Mrs. Belarus, that's a gold medal. We have a gold medal for 2017, no doubt about it, no matter what it is. And then, of course, the systems the, the will be affected. Twatine. The great Twatini, the great Twatini. He's worked hard for his country. Absolutely, absolutely. Hard for his country, absolutely. that guy. And so Twatini, Kudos to him, yeah. oh yes, you have to. You have to give him the ratings that he deserves. And so he has done well with um, Julian Alfred winning the medal. Um, and of course, the government at the time ensuring that she went on to Jamaica, a new environment, to keep her competitive. So that worked very well. Um, we also had the young men in the football who actually won the football championships, the first ever um, under 21, I think it was, or under 18 football championships in the, youth, in the youth games. And so we had a great team headed by Mr. St. Rose, who is now, I think, working in one of the islands, small islands. But he, of course, led the team to victory um, in that championship. So he won two medals there. Um, now, the good thing is the synergy, because again, being president of the Olympic Committee, I was also in the Ministry of Sports, so we were able to work the dynamics well you know, to ensure that we got that. Because you really need synergies across Absolutely. all the agencies, you know, to make sure people understand their role, what's the supposed to be happening. And That's right, and it, and, it, and it worked out well. So for us, within the Olympic Committee, I think we are consistent. Uh, we have a solid program of support for the athletes. Um, of course, as, a, as, a, as an Olympic Committee, there's so much we can do, but there are other sectors, there are other institutions that can provide support to enable athletes to achieve. By the time the athletes come to us, um, a lot of them are sometimes professional athletes, so they too have their own commitments and their own sources um, of their funding through, um, through the sponsorships, you know, that assist them um, as well. So we've been able to realize some good success um, through, through that, and so I hope to bring some of that, you understand, to cash disease. I heard the leader of the opposition talking about creating history in cash disease, and I think we're down to create history. Um, whatever that history is, it's between me and him. So we'll see how the battle goes. How it, how it unfolds. <laughs> how it unfolds there. But I think we're done for history making um, in Katz this, this this time around. But it's competitive, it's sports. Um, it's, um, yeah, we're on the battlefield. Yes, he's, on his, he's on the field with his team, I'm on the field with my team. And of course, may the best team win, you know, through this effort. Once again, listeners, you're on to Constituency Vibes, 93.1 mm -hmm. FM. This is your program mm -hmm. where we discuss what is happening at the community level, the government's commitment, its passion to mm -hmm. developing St. Lucia for the length and breadth of our 238 square miles constituency by constituency. Um, Minister, we, as a, a sports person, you spoke about um, Julian Alfred going to Jamaica. We have mm -hmm. the Sports Academy. Yes. And, and talk to us about that and, and how does that fit and dovetail yeah. into it. Well, the Sports Academy is, is a, an institutional school, um, really, where you, you athletes who really want to excel in sports or who have the propensity to play sport, you know, and the skill set for sports um, are really nurtured. Um, I think it's a great institution based on what we see in terms of honing the skills of our youngsters. But importantly for me, the grooming and the, and the fine tuning, you understand, of the individual, the citizen who is going to be out there to represent us, I think is part of the, 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 the great work you know, that is happening within that institution. When you leave that institution, you're one, you're a better athlete, but importantly, you're a better representative, you know, of your country, given the skill sets, um, the environment, the testing, the programming, you know, um, that is done. And that is something that is needed, because you may have people who can go out and represent you in sport, but when it comes to the, 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 
the person, the, 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 the person, the total person being out there, you know, some of the athletes fall short in that area. And I think the institution provides a lot of support in terms of making that happen. It's a great place to go for athletes. Um, and importantly, the, the academic education is not compromised, you know, when, they, we're in, when they're in that setting. So they get the sports attention, but they also get equal attention to the academics. And of course, it's all focused on their own abilities, you know, as well. So right. it's a great institution. And that's critical. So when they get the scholarship, yeah, the scholarships as well, they have yeah. to perform academically. Absolutely. While we're talking about um, athletes representing St. Lucia, mm -hmm. recently, I think the footballers were not able to represent St. Lucia. And yeah. that, that issue, that controversy, if you will, is up in the air. There's a, some schools of thought that seem to think that government is doing nothing about it and government doesn't in, get involved. And what, 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 Tell us what, what, what in Africa. <laughs> well, well, I think all sports organizations, and I think we have about 26 of them here, these organizations are all autonomous bodies. They are affiliated to the international federations, and that is where they take their directive and they work. Government of St. Lucia has a responsibility for creating the framework of the environment, you understand, to help shape sport. And I think in the last four years, you would have seen the investment, particularly around the football playing fields. And, and I think there's been great synergy between the government and the football association in terms of what is happening. And when you speak to Mr. Cooper, the excitement in his voice about the support for his sport, you know, is phenomenal. So for me, I was taken aback with the, with the controversy. Um, I don't know the details of the programming. Remember, I sit as the Olympic Committee President. We also, every year, um, make a request to our teams and our affiliates um, to provide us with data on their projections and in terms of their performances and whether there's a plan of action for the various major national events. Um, Football Association had indicated to us very early, you know, that given the circumstances within their body at this point in time, that they were not able to make. And that was informal. But we, didn't, we don't have a formal, you know, decline of it. But they did indicate from very early it would not have been possible, you know, for, for them to attend. So I'm not sure all of who, who will allow it about. Um, this is typical St. Lucian thing. We last minute, the event is on, and now we're asking questions. We should have been asking questions a long time ago. But people but are I saying that think, government should intervene. Well, I, I don't think that's a, the responsibility of government. The association is the best decision. They, they made the decision in the interest of their organization. And FIFA has clear rules. FIFA has course. clear rules and regulations. The government cannot intervene in a case like this. Um, they, they, they have no obligation. And in fact, if the government intervenes, FIFA can suspend them. You understand? And, and, and put them off for a number of years because of, the, because of the, the, the involvement of government. Government should never interfere in the affairs of associations. What government has to do is continue to engage them, liaise with them, um, which I think is what has been happening between the association and the, and the, um, and the, and the ministry. So I don't think there was any, uh, I, I don't know, I think it's just Sinusian public reacting as usual, always reacting at the end of the day. It was just too late to react now. We needed to ask questions four years ago with respect to that team heading there and what all the issues are. Now, I know football has a number of players overseas. Um, and again, COVID restricted the movement and the travel efforts um, of some of these players. They're also players that they would want to bring in third generation solutions not first, second, but third generation solutions um, to come in from, uh, from England, high exposure athletes to come in. So all of these issues had to be weighed in terms of them actually um, participating. Because when you're going out, you really want your best team out. The same way St. Lucians are saying to you, they want a team out there. If the team is being drowned and getting licks, they will kill you as well, you know. They're not easy, you know. And so you must be sure of what you're doing when you're in the public domain, you know, in, on any matter. And I think the Football Association, maybe they did it, they, they, they probably um, rang the bell too late or made the case too late. Um, but I think it's, it's something, a decision that they had to make and they would be the best persons to, to clear the air you know, um, on that issue. But again, the government cannot interfere in the operations of associations. There's a clear line, um, you know, a dividing line with respect to their responsibility. And if government interferes, they stand the risk of being suspended by FIFA, you understand, because of the, you know, the interference of government. So, tout le monde qui a coûté dans le gouvernement passe à évoluer. Quoi, il y a des affaires football, ça c'est un clair policy. Mm -hmm. So, le monde qui a dit que le gouvernement s'est posé faire un bagage, faire un bagage, faire, il n'y a pas de travail, il n'y a pas de faire. Mrs. Bellrose, cast receipts. Yes. Tell us about your, your, clearly the passion, the love, the commitment, the energy, the vibe of transforming mm -hmm. cast receipts here. It is this clearly um, evident in, you know, in, 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 when, when we hear you, when we see you on the ground as well. What has the reception been like in Castro? Phenomenal. 
phenomenal reception. And remember, I came into the election race um, five years ago. Like, I was late. Because once I came in, the opposition, they called the election. So that just threw me, everybody off. Um, but for me, I really enjoyed the campaign. And I did not realize, I think we were talking earlier about that, and I didn't really get there. But the most exciting part of the election for me was that campaign. You know? And so when I got into the campaign, and they called the election, I never thought I would have had so much fun, Ricky. It was a joy to be a part of this. I would get up every morning at my home. By 5.30, I'm up. And 6.30, I'm on the road. And I'm out for the whole day. I come back at midnight in the evening. And I did that for 21 days. 21 days. So I really enjoyed it. So that's why that's it was... passion and commitment. Yeah, right? that's right. So I, I enjoyed it. For service as well. Absolutely. So I really enjoyed engaging the citizens, just walking into their homes, and they're just smiling when they see you. It was a joy. And I must say, for the last five years, it continued to be the same. So I would have been to many homes in Castries. The sad thing about Castries is we do not have actual numbers. They pull in the, 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 the voters list saying the, the, the 12,600 voters. Um, but we believe that perhaps it's much less. There's a lot of padding in there. Um, and I think that what we wanted to do, which was the, the census, the population census, to assist us, COVID came. And of course, once COVID came, we couldn't do that house-to-house -house survey you know, that the, the national population census would have done. And so we lost an opportunity to be able to do that. But I guess at some point, the government will do it. But I want to believe that the numbers are grossly stated in Cash Resist, um, from what I'm seeing. And we will, we will see how that goes and how that fares in time. But I enjoy the campaign. I look forward to it. Um, I think it's all about giving people hope and making them understand that this is not what it was supposed to be. You know, to me, today I met nine young men who came in to me. They were from all areas of the island, but they all live together in an abandoned house, like a family. You understand? Their family is them, from Maricil, Babo No, they've all come together, and they live in this abandoned house. Dilapidated, that's where they are. We need to help change the lives, the livelihood of these fellas. So tomorrow, I have all of them going for interviews, which is good, you know, but I told them I'll be going with them, you know, to ensure that people, uh, as we agreed, nine o'clock, on the clock, we'll be going out. But the thing is, it's about looking after people. And I see so many people who need a little care and attention, and that has not been happening for them. You know, and all you do every five years is you come around, offer them $20 or $5 to block a hole, and then you expect them to vote you again, and then you say you've been represented. I think it's a bit unfair, and my thing is to work with these young men to ensure that they understand what voting is. Voting is not merely for transaction. Some people may want to take it as a transaction. I pay you, and then that's it. But voting is about representing and getting and connecting to a philosophy, connecting to a thinking, connecting to a government's vision, you understand, for a community, and ensuring that the government delivers on that vision for you. That is what the voting is. It, 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 it's about you being connected, you understand, to what is happening in the society. And people need to see what representation is all about. So we connect, you agree, we're building a new St. Lucia, and so we want to be on that train to build a new St. Lucia. And what is happening? What is coming to our community as a result of the building? That's what people want to know. You understand? And so if you're representing them, that is what the thinking should be. It's not just a vote, a transaction. I pay you and you, I can't hear you for five years. No. You know, it's not supposed to be. You know, some people want to do it, they do it. But my philosophy is if you're representing, we represent you for five years. We cannot be representing just around election time only. Viewers, you're on to Constituency Vibes, 93.1 FM. We're on GDV TV and Facebook and, and on Flow on Channel 511. Um, Mrs. Belrose, we talk about that vision. Mm -hmm. What does the voter expect, the vision for Cash Resist? Ah, man. Talk to us. You know, I'm offering the folks from Cash Resist a bold vision to live in a clean, safe, secure, and peaceful environment in Cash Resist where the children can go to school in world-class facilities, where they can have spaces, creative spaces, for them to articulate themselves, and also to ensure that the health, and you heard my government talk about health, you know, the health insurance, you know, is covered, and the housing that they live in, most importantly in cash disease, the housing, the housing, you know, is modular housing, where people, where people are comfortable, you know, and if there's one sore part of that constituency, you know, um, is the housing areas for those persons who are deprived. Serious, serious issues, Ricky. It touches my heart every day when I walk into those houses and my spikes go through the floor. 
you know, or where the, 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 or where the plywood, you know, where the plywood is all, it, it's making, how do you call it? It, 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 it's thinning out, yes. you understand? And so housing, I think, is a critical, critical, critical issue in that constituency. And of course, you have the unemployment issue, which is big. So we want to be able to afford them, you know, the opportunities for employment within the redevelopment, you understand, of the Castries East area. So these are some of the things that we want to do. Um, and of course, there are several things to that, because in terms of offering them a clean, safe environment, you know, my government is, is, is planning to ensure that within Castries East, we have our own Castries East Council. Because you cannot tell me for the last, how many years, 50 years, Castries City Council has been the agency servicing the Castries area. And they service Castries, yes, they service the city yeah, very well. Four of the and you have four constituencies in that area, and some of the areas suffer. You know, I think over time the mayor has been trying, and he's tried his best to give everybody some level of service. But I think it's always better, you understand, to have your own zone and your people within your zone work to ensure that they deliver quality services within the zone. Because as it is now, it's a major issue for us. And you know, that is why for me sometimes I wonder, although I've been in government years as a public servant, but I'm saying as politicians, one of the things you have to do is to always assess what is it that is not working? You understand? What is it that is not working? To try to fix it. And fix it for the long term, not for the short term. And so Castries has suffered over the years as a result of that. And we want to change that. And that is a fundamental change that will come once we're able to establish our own council. You know, and for donkey years, you, you hear the parliamentary opposition complaining and complaining. But what did you do about it? What did you do to ensure that it would not be the way it is. You understand? These are some of the issues for me, you know, because you've been there 25 years. What have you done to ensure that the system is better? So when you leave, you understand, you can live in peace and not worry. And the, the reason why you want to stay on is because there's some things you really wanted to see happen and they haven't yet. And they ain't gonna happen because you don't even have the energy again because, you know, been there, done that, you know? And so we need to ensure that been we there, do done it that right. And didn't do something. And didn't <laughs> So these are some of the issues, you know, that we have, to, we, have to, we have to be guided by. So the council, for sure, is one of the ways that we'll ensure that we take ownership and claim our constituency to ensure that it's much better for our people, a much better environment for our people. Listeners, you're on to Constituency Vibes, 93.1 FM, and Sky FM, are we on GDV TV, through Facebook as well, and on Flow 90, Channel 115. And my guest this evening... Mrs. Fortunio Bellrose, the UDP candidate for Castries East. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're talking about the transformation, the yes. redevelopment of mm -hmm. Castries East. And uh, Mrs. Bellrose, as part of the sports infrastructure program, oh, yeah. and you are a sports person, um, Castries East, Mindu Philip, yes. there's some major plans for Mindu Philip. Um, speak to us uh, about that kind of transformation. You have the photo? Yes, the photos will be going up as oh, well. Okay. Yes, when, um, yes, well, I know, well, some um, four or five years, four years ago, five years ago, the government began a whole reformation program around the sports facilities. Um, and as you can see across the country, some of these facilities are already there. So the Soufre, um facility is in place. Um, in Deriso, you have the facilities in place. In Miku, I think Miku is finishing um, very soon. Denry, where um, Honorable Estefan is, um, these facilities in Denry are all world-class um, facilities. Um, in the north of the island, we've also targeted some facilities for upgrading. And Mindo Phillip Park, Marshall Grounds, is also up for major transformation. Um, I think one of the things we, we recognize in Castries, and for those of us who are honest um, with ourselves in Castries, we know that the Mindo Philip Park Marshall Grounds over the last, say, 30 years has been primarily a ground that is used for track and field. Track and field. But yet we're now in 20, what are we, 2021, and we still have the kids running on the grass track. Nothing wrong in grass track because all over the world is grass track. But come on, you know, we are, this, we are, we, we, we are cash resist. We are in the city. We should be offering better services to our people. And so the focus of our government is to ensure that we provide for one track and field, which is one of the major sports in the Castries area. Um, and of course, you have 14 schools, like I said earlier, who actually use that facility for the track and field service. And we're looking to ensure that we establish a facility that would provide food and football, and in addition to other services for sport. To do is really broaden the thinking of the people throughout the constituency, because remember, it's not only Marshall, we have 
Bokanj, we have Independent City, we have Enchipo, we have all of these areas where you have people with various skills, various needs, who want to be a part, you understand, of that transformation process with us. So whereas we'll be focusing on track and field and football, there are other avenues that will be provided. So your basketball, your volleyball, your swimming, all of these services will be coming in. Gone are the days when we lived, in, when we lived at the park, it was only cricket. But now there will be some provision for cricket, but importantly, we will be expanding the, the services we've been there for sports, and we really hope that the citizenry come on board with us in ensuring that it's developed in the right way. So there'll be a lot of engagement once we get in, you know, to ensure that that happens for the constituency. And of course, when that picture comes up, um, one of the critical things about it is that um, when we started the program yeah. and when the government presented that vision, mm -hmm. what we heard from the other side and other quarters is just, just fancy pictures. It was just renderings. Um, when you well, look they always have to defend <laughs> and say something, you know. You're supposed to... <laughs> One of the things we've learned in the politics is that fellas always have to find the other side. Whether they, they, they try to imagine it or whatever, but they always have to find the other thing to say. But we know that the United Workers' Party has been the only government that consistently delivers for the people. Consistently delivers. You've never had a UWP in government. You understand? A UWP party in government that did not show slit at the end of each year. You understand? So every year, this government of the United Workers Party, which I'm proud to be a part of, eh? I'm proud to be a part of that team. Absolutely. Because they've left, so John has left a great legacy for us. We must work. You must yeah, work if you want to earn. We you are must workers. Work. And we are workers. Yeah. And so for me, a worker, that's what I am. I'm not a, I'm not a mouthful. I can't talk. You understand? I'm, I, I, I'm, I don't have the eloquence of speech like most people have. But I think I can demolish myself. You understand? And I can also work in any team. You understand to deliver the goods, you know, and that's where I, 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 I am so proud to be a member of the United Workers Party. And so for me, it is always the better option with respect to the delivery for the country. And if people are honest and they reflect, you know, on what has happened in the past and where we are today, they would see that there was more, more stuff going on in our country when the United Workers Party was in office. And if you look across the country, you will see it. Where the UWP is, there is a lot of action going on. As, as a government, as a team, you have been able to deliver. What is that chemistry, the dynamism, what is happening, the leadership, the vision? Um, a lot has been able to happen, um, particularly in this COVID crisis yeah. at this time. And in the time of plenty, a lot mm. of other governments could not deliver like the UWP has yeah. delivered. Tell us about that. Yeah. When you sit in the cabinet, Well, well I can tell you, oh yeah, the cabinet is an exciting place. <laughs> the cabinet is an exciting place, you know. And so we have a team headed by a captain who is the Honorable Prime Minister, you know, and um, I remember when he moved me um, from the Ministry of Local Government a few years ago, I think a lot of people misinterpreted, you know, the move. But for me, it was, you know, you're in the football field, you know, it's midway in the game, you know, it's not going the way you want, you know, so you make changes. And that is how people are supposed to view this thing, you know, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's great. So we have a great leader in the person of Alan Michael Shastley. He's daring, he's bold, he's prepared to take risk, he's prepared to take hard decisions, um, and I think that is for me the best part, you know, of being in it. You know, if it's not good, it's not good. If it's not going to happen, it's going to happen good. You understand? And so that is what he brings to the table in terms of ensuring that we understand we must get it right. Yeah, we must get it right. And then, of course, the other members of the teams. You have the power, the defenders, you have the, the, mid, the, the, the mid runners. You know, you, you have a great combination there that I do not believe the SLP will ever have the force, you understand, to really be able to come through against us. The team is good. The dynamics in the team is good. Um, people are free to ventilate. People are free to express themselves. But when it comes to going for the target we've set, we all move on it. And so I think for me, it's just, it, it's just great um, that we found the right team for our country, you know, at this point in time. And Alan Chastney is great as a leader. He doesn't chicken as a leader. He has the backbone. He has the guts. And you can see in terms of what the public, some people have just gone to town on him. But you know what? He really enjoys that. You know, and it's what off his back. You know, um, and these things make you stronger, you know, as, 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 as a citizen, because you know exactly what people are thinking and how you have to respond, you understand, to the demands that they're making on you or what it is that they don't like about you. You know, and as leaders, that's what we have to do. We always have to balance things. And I think he's exceptional, you know, at doing that. Great team player, um, listens to everybody. 
before he comes up with that decision. And that is the way to go in everything. And so we're quite happy. And I can tell my country, I'm proud, you understand, to be a part of that team. Because I think under the leadership of Sir Alan Michael Chastney, you all say so? Yeah, yeah. You see, he'll soon get the so because he's working hard enough. <laughs> I like that. I like where you're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll soon get the so because he's working hard enough, you know, um, to really keep the country, you know, in the right direction. And so that's what I see. That's what I know. I don't know anything less. You understand? And so for me, the Prime Minister is doing a phenomenal job. Um, and so because, you know, you're managing leaders. Because every one of us are leaders, yes, you know. Absolutely. We all come absolutely. with our own leadership styles and our abilities. His job is to manage all of these people, all of these egos and everybody else, to ensure that we stay focused on the goal. The man is great. That's all I can say. One of the sad things in the politics for me, mm -hmm. I mean, I myself haven't contested in 2001, served mm -hmm. in the Senate as well. Um, well, there was the whole issue. People feel that, you know, the whole PhD stuff in the politics and people come to clean up the politics and all of that. But you see that vilifying, that kind of racism, the prejudice, the kind of attacks yeah. on the Prime Minister, you know, that has really brought in water about mm -hmm. a sand, sort of a dark, yeah. um, you know, stain on, on, on the politics. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I, I, I think it has. But I think one, for me as the Minister for Culture, I think as a, and as a parent, um, I think we have to continuously teach our children the, the, the right way and the values. Um, and once they expose the values that we have, you know, as, as, as citizens of this country, then we have no reason to fear. I think we need to begin to see the politics for what the politics is. You know, in fact, um, a few days ago I was told somebody said that I have an issue with Laverne Spencer. I was shocked because I never knew I had an issue. But they say, Belarus has politics. They have to say things so you can understand where, where the politics is. But that's cheap, low politics. You know, and if that is politics, well, I'm not in that. So maybe that's what I'm not in yet. You know, but the, the critical thing is... We need to ensure that as citizens of this country, we teach our children and teach them well. well. Many people want to rely on the school to do the job for them, but we need to do the, the job in our own homes of teaching our children the values, teaching them right and right from wrong, and teaching them to respect people, no matter who they are. You must respect them, you know, and, if, and you have to respect the office that people hold, so that when you have a prime minister, you have a governor general, we need to teach our people to respect those of the, the, the office the holders of those offices, you know? And so if, if this doesn't happen, then our society will be doomed. But we know the, the, the announcers of doom and gloom in our society, so many of us know exactly how to respond to those things. And I think the citizenry, St. Lucians are not stupid people. St. Lucians are very intelligent people. They understand, they feel the vibe, they know when it is right. And I think in, in, in my heart, as a St. Lucian, as a progressive St. Lucian, I think all St. Lucians would understand and believe that we are on the right course with this government. So they can say what they want, you understand? I think the, the, the public, to my mind, has made up their minds in terms of what they're seeing. Yes. You're on to 93.1 FM, Sky FM, and of course we are here with our wonderful guests tonight. All our guests are wonderful yes. as well. We always have wonderful guests here. Mrs. Fortuna Belarus, the will be candidate for Castries East, and of course she has been telling you about her passion, her commitment, and her devotion. Uh, Mrs. Barrows, as you walk through the constituency in Bocas and Shabot and Bacatel and Masha, what are some of the issues that are, that are coming out? Well, this? boy, and, and let me tell you, each part of the constituency is different. Each part is different. So when you, when you go into a Bocage, for example, in Bocage, you have, in Bocage you have very ambitious people. You have people who own their own properties um, in that community. And some of the concerns that they have is that the drainage... You understand? They have concerns around drainage. They have concerns, you know, that there's no civic center, you know, for the community. You know, and you're looking at communities that are well established. People who own their own homes, looking for an area for them to interact and relate, you know. And so for me, when I look at the Bokash community, that sense of community, they need to, we, we, we need to find, you understand, a place in that community for them to be able to come together, recreate and have fun. We found that space, I think, I mean, talking to the young men and women, there's an area where the, ba the, the basketball court is, and you know what, one time Bukaj was stops in basketball, the National League was being run there. So we believe that we can fix that area beautifully and create a beautiful arena, you know, um, for them. And of course, the people, the children um, in that community can come in and have fun um, in that space. So, so that is one we can do, and of course, also make it a space that is Wi-Fi, where Wi-Fi is available, so they can have that you understand, to engage themselves. And if there's one thing, that community, you organize any event. 
the community turns out. Any event you organize, they come out. So that, understand, that sense of belonging, it's right there within the community. Strong community strong spirit. Strong community feeling, and yes, very, 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 very strong. And the synergies are there, I think, and so working with the young people, that's their desire. Working with the elderly, that's their desire. So we need to ensure that that happens for, for them, and that's just the Bukhash community. Yeah, that space where they can come together, you understand, and find joy and love, you know, and fun, you know, um, in relating to each other. So we need to do that there. In addition, of course, to the drainage, because as you know, they're on a the hillside, so there are lots of issues of water running in, um, people trying to build their homes, and of course, these drains need to be channeled properly, you know, into the river um, in that area. When you look at another community, for example, the Wasco lands, the Shabbat area is a different years ago, um, and so it's still very much well maintained, except of course because of the all the grass and so it's not being cleaned properly. But in terms of people maintaining their homes, because it's their private homes, um, they maintain that area very well. But in, there's an area called the Wasco lands area, which is um, an area that literally grew off, you know, um, where people were squatting, you know, um, and people have been squatting there for over 30, 40 years. And so what has happened there now, what we're trying to do there now is to identify a few projects within that community that can be done. So the road is an issue, the drainage is an issue, and also the fact that we have, I'm disturbing. Okay, so I'm told to continue. Yes, the, drain, the drainage is an issue, the road is an issue, and of course housing is also a major issue in that area. And of course, the whole question of the land tenure, where people do not own the land, but they're squatting, we need to be able to fix that um, as well in that community. So that is the Was Wasco lands area. And in the Wasco lands, there's a beautiful um, facility, the remnants of the first water station in St. Lucia, you understand, in the Castries area. And we want to utilize that for a nature heritage project. And so once we get in, that project, of course, would be first and foremost on our priority listing to do. And also what it will do is also give the people in that community some form of employment, you understand, and opportunities for their families, of course, um, to earn a decent living um, as a result. Um, that area, of course, was just not touched, you know, by the last government. You know, it's so sad that people would just be allowed to live in any condition, anyhow. You know, I, I think it is so sad that we don't plan for the population growth, you know, in communities. You know, the communities are naturally going to expand because people have families. But there's no provision, and so people just squat. No foresight. And they move in. No foresight. And so my government is different. I think we're planning, we're looking ahead, and we're trying to ensure that those kinds of issues are addressed, and not only addressed for now, but forever going forward. You know, so that was the West School Lands area. Independent City and also Entrepo are areas that are well established um, in these areas. What we need to do is to fix the recreational areas for our children and our, and our sportsmen um, in that community. So that's, that's a major issue there, but the road network is good. Um, and also the, the availability of services in that community is also, also very good. Um, when you look at the Bagatelle area, many squatters in that area. It's up on the hillside, drainage is poor, everything is poor about the establishment you know, in that area called Bagatelle. And so there's a lot of work to be done. I know from our Minister of Housing, he's already committed to assisting us in doing the land rationalization program. Um, and so hopefully we can get that problem resolved once and for all for the residents of that community. People so live on the over all these years? Yeah, 25 years of representation, it can happen. And I'm trying to figure out why would it take so long for something like that to happen, you know? And so <laughs> why does it, <laughs> for it not to be addressed? Because once you're in government, things are easy to be addressed. In terms of lands, there's something called compulsory acquisition, which you do in the people's interests. So when you tell me you could not have done it in the first term, you could not have done it in the second term, you could not have done it in the third term, and now you're out of government, and you cannot pen a letter to say, please look at this project for me, then something is seriously wrong with you, nothing happening. You understand? So you had five opportunities to do that for the people, and it never happened. Why should they think that it will happen now when you become prime minister and you will not have the time? You will not have the time to service them because he said it this week. He will not have the time to service them because he has a national agenda. He didn't, say, he didn't say that. He said that. You sure he said yeah, that? Yeah, man. On Chill and Chat, he said so. He wanted the people to understand that he has a whole country to see about. He has 16 other constituencies to see about, so he would not have time. For, he wouldn't have time for, for his own No, he wouldn't have time. He said so. 
I, mean, I, I may be wrong, but I know I saw that and read that. I, I was like, what? You're telling the people that? And, you know, <laughs> the issue is now, Catrice, he's, he's in contention for the prime ministership, but there's still a matter of representation of the people, the local people. You have to represent them. Before you can get to be prime minister, you have to represent them. You understand? And so you've had all these years, you failed them, and now you're telling them, well, you know, you have 16 other seats to see about, so you don't have time. You know, so I don't know what that means. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just making fun of it, but that's... <laughs> There's no care. Where's There's the no care? care. Where's where the caring? And you know what care? <laughs> you know? And the thing is, if you really care too, there would have been initiatives on the ground even now. Because you've been the one there for 25 years. There would have been initiatives even now that demonstrates the caring nature, you understand, of the Labour Party. So what are those initiatives on the ground, particularly as I look at all of these young men, all of these young men who need guidance? Ricky, people come to me, today they were in my office. They don't even know there's an SSDF. They don't even know what services SSDF provide. They don't even know where they can go to get help. You know, they don't even know that government have a, a, a burial program. They don't know. So I find myself, and maybe fortunately for me, you understand, I'm coming out of the bosom of government. I can tell them where all these services are. When they leave there, it's an education for them. People are excited when they leave because now they have options. They know where to go. And I'm saying within every community, that kind of service should be available. So when you do that, it frees you up from having to take that time to go through these basic things with people. And you can focus on the bigger issues, you know, in the community. But there's a lot of base work still to be done. And I'm saying, where after was the education? Years. Yes, after 25 years, man. Be real. You know, come on. You know, so it's, it's really sad that we are that way. And, and, and key supporters, too, they have no idea where to go. Because they believe, well, the funeral, the funeral um, program he has is the key. Funeral. No, there's a, somebody has difficulty, they can go to the government. If you have issues with your health, you can go to the government service. Government is set up to facilitate its people. Absolutely. And so we are in a country where you have more people who do not have than people who have. And so obviously, in constructing government, you have to ensure that the services are there for your people, you know, to a certain level. And so it's amazing that a lot of people just don't know. And I find myself doing a lot of that education, which is great, because I get to connect with them, you know, and I think that was the missing dimension, you know, in the scheme of things. Yeah, that connection is very Yeah, important. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You're on to um, constituency vibes, um, my viewers and listeners on 93.1 FM, and of course on GDV TV, and we're on Flow, channel 115. This is the program where we enlighten you, we share the vision, the program, the progress, the direction in which the government is going in terms of transforming St. Lucia commute constituency by constituency so yeah. that you can see that growth, you can see that growth. Throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia, you can see the work of the United Workers Party, you can see the work of the government, mm -hmm. you can see the commitment, you can see the passion, you can see the energy yeah. of the ministers working for you, working Absolutely. for it. And of course, listeners and viewers, now you have that chance in Cast Resist yes. to make that change. Yes. And Mrs. Barrows will tell us about that change. That I, 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 I am so excited every time you say that, you know, because they have the opportunity. And that is the greatest thing they have is opportunity. So you have the opportunity not to go back to the past. You have the opportunity to move forward. You understand? They have the opportunity to move forward. And, you know, I was going through the areas a while ago. I got to Bagatel. And Bagatel, all they tell you they want is a court. For years, that's all they want. They want a court. And that's because the young men want a place to vent and free up themselves, etc. But then, of course, the land has never been acquired. So there's a whole host of things to be done to make sure it happens for them. You know, in addition to the fact that the community itself is located on a hillside, you have drainage issues, you have access issues, you understand? And so it is really a challenge, you know, to make things happen for them. And but you have to do it. It's on a hillside. I mean, remember Castro is southeast. Yes. In, um, um, on the hill in Castro southeast. Yeah, many hills that, in Castro southeast. Yes. You have Forester, you have Trapito, um, you have Geno, you have... Badney, everywhere. Badney. Badney, okay, Badney. They uh -huh. said that they couldn't build a court up there, Minister right. Guy Joseph. Oh, yeah, he sure court. he could build a court on pillars, right? <laughs> 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 well, well, actually, in, in, in Pave is another community we have. And in Pave, too, that's another community. We've heard Pave for years. A community that was so alive. You understand? We need to infuse some energy in there. All the people want is a place, again, to congregate, to recreate a community center or a civic center, and of course an area for the children to go to daycare. You know, because everybody has to live with the children to go into town.
to find a daycare service, you know, for them instead of having something in the community where they can come home and pick their children up, you know, and go home. So all we're looking for is a simple facility um, in the in the in the Pave area with an area for Wi-Fi services. You understand, so that the people can be happy. That is all they want, man. Twenty-five years, you can do it, you know, for them. You know, so it's 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 hard when you look at it, and the simplicity of the needs is what is, is what freaks me out. Simple, simple, simple things that can be done, but chose to be ignored for some reason or the other. It can be done, and I think in, in our case, with our government and the commitment of my government, I think there are lots that we will do, you understand, in the next term of office for caste disease. And then, of course, we look at the Rock Hall community, again, major communities on the hill, the whole picture on the drainage, rivers, rocks coming down on people, you know, all of these things need to be fixed once and for all. They can be fixed, but you must just make the right investment in them. You understand? The boulevard area, another issue, another contentious area again, that needs to be overhauled completely. And you heard my prime minister the last time he was in the house, he told the parliamentary rep, I'll fix it once and for all. And that is what people want to hear. You know, that you will take an action that will make sure there is no recurrence or resurgence, you understand, of those kinds of issues in the community. So we're happy that it will be addressed um, in that area. Um, there's also the Tuwish community, which is a real strong support community um, for the opposition. But if you go there, it will break your heart. It will break your heart. Really? Yeah. People have to climb stairs, no railings, the step sign a mess. You know, the whole community, the drainage problem is an issue. I mean, I had to go in there about three weeks ago to help a lady solve a simple drainage issue. Simple problem. Ignored over the years, 25 years, you know, um, in that area. And that's a strong area um, that support, an area that supported the SLP very staunchly. So it seemed to me that there was no effort on the ground in terms of doing the mobilization work and looking at the community needs. Um, across the 25 years in caste disease. No needs assessment. Because there was no regular needs assessment, you know, and that's why when, when the facility was built in the boulevard, it was just a toilet facility. What you needed to do was to give everybody their own toilet facility, you know, and it would have been much less in terms of cost because that facility cost the government of St. Lucia $1.3 million or so. Yeah, $1.3, $1.1. But if every household, and say there are 60 households, had gotten their own little toilet, in that community, it would be much less, and you spend five thousand dollars on each little toilet. But what is this? You would only have had to pay about three hundred thousand dollars. But you spend one point something million dollars to build this facility in the boulevard, and now it's totally useless to the people. And in you know? age, people this need their privacy. People of need course, their, these amenities are critical. In the yes, you need people to build their confidence. They need to have those amenities so they can feel good about themselves, that they don't have to go around and everybody see when they go into the bathroom. You know, is that good? I mean, we do that on the beaches and so. If we have to go to bathroom, everybody know it's open space. You know, you, but you know, you're in your neighborhood and you have to be subjected to people watching your business in that way. Come on, clearly. It's, it's a different time, a different era. And that's what I'm saying. We're in a different time. We cannot have those types of thinking, you understand, in our communities today. No way. You know, we can't, we can't do all people that. We can't subject them to that type of thinking where we believe that a bathroom facility, you know, to serve everybody, is the best thing to do in a community where people have none. So it's time for it's new wrong. leadership. It's time for vision, you know, and new leadership. Yeah. I wouldn't even say new leadership, you know, because you, you, good leadership. Good leadership. Yeah, just say good leadership because good leadership has a little common sense and that can happen, you know, um, with, with, with this. But it's, 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 it's sad to see the way it is. And as a woman who grew up in that area too, I was there in the boulevard. We were in the boulevard all the time. You know, we were in the, day, the, in the days of the Bache when the trucks would pass early morning. My aunt lived in the boulevard. So we were always there. And to see they're still in that mess to this day and age, you understand? Without a proper comprehensive plan, you understand, for the era, it is sad. We need to change it. And, and, and people have to be real about this. This is heartbreaking, you know, to see what is happening there. And the Bible says without a vision. A people perish, perish. yes. And, and, you know, and the, and the sad thing is, if you don't get them to buy into the vision too, you know, you, so why as a leader may have the vision, but it's important for the people to understand the vision, buy into it, 
and move along with you. That means you, you know? must share that vision. You, you must, must share interact. that vision. That's right. You that's right. Interact. You must interact. Yeah. Must so so that's where that that's where we are. So that's Castries. Uh, that's Castries. I think I mentioned all areas. Roll call. I mentioned the drainage issues. Um, in tools, you have drainage issues as well. You also have um, the, the question of a lot of steps being built because it's hillside. In some areas, you really can't put a road in there, so the steps are necessary. But then the railings on the sides for the elderly Safety. is something. I went to see a couple way up in the top of Tuish, you know, and um, no steps. And I was panicking and scared, you know, going up, you know, to that place and coming down. Fall these people who are 75 and 80 years old, you know, trying to commute daily, going in and out of that place. So there are lots of issues there that needed to be looked at strategically, and it didn't happen. You understand? So... We cannot say that the parliamentary rep didn't do anything. He did some things. You have to give him credit for that. But I think in terms of the new direction, he, he, he doesn't have the foresight, the vision, and the energy because he himself has said it. Been there, done that. No energy for the others. So we need to move on. Okay. And our people in cash resist need to understand it's time to move on. Do not get caught up and stuck up in the past. Do not live in the past. But let us look to the future and see what it is that we can do to make our communities better. And of course, it's probably he needs the energy for the leadership struggle battle as well. <laughs> well, I don't know. As for that one, it's a drama. <laughs> That's a drama in itself. Because, you know, when you take on leadership, I, I must say, I'm not, a, I'm not a leadership guru, you know, but I know that I've been the president of associations and organizations before. And when you take on leadership, it's not just taking on the leadership. You have to, you have to battle against all the forces you know, in terms of what is in the dynamics of this institutional organization. And if you don't have backbone and you cannot stand up, you understand, and you're playing games and everything is in your head, blowing off your head, it ain't going to work, you know. You need to have a clear and strategic plan, methodological plan, to be able to do what is required of you. And so if you're going to hide in a cocoon and say you're not going to supermarket, you're not going on go bus, <laughs> you're you're not going out, you understand, and you're staying in. No, you have to connect with people. They need to see you, they need to feel you, they need to know that you care. You can't stay at your home and say about the government doesn't care. Our government cares. We are the one on the ground. I've been on the ground for five years, you know. Every child in that community know me, you know. There's no child in Castries that say they don't know who Fortuna Belrose is. They know the bullet lady. You understand, they know her. You know, and so that is what representation is all about. Being there, understanding the people's needs, and fighting the battle, you understand, for them. But not ignoring them and saying you have too much at work to do elsewhere. So they'll have to understand, no. They've given you that for 25 years. Come on, you can do better than that. You know, let it go. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs from the Frozen the, the movie. Let, yes. let it go. Let it go. Listeners, viewers, you're on to Constituency Vibes. Um, we are about to open our lines now, 456-0931, so feel free to call. Um, I guess tonight is Mrs. Fortuna Belrose, the UWB candidate for Castries East. And, of course, change is coming to Castries yes. East. The winds of change are blowing, and so we have our first call. Welcome, caller. Welcome to Constituency Vibes. Good night. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Ms. Belrose. Hi, good evening, my dear. And how are you? Always fine, thanks. Wonderful. Ms. Rose, your husband has been seen driving you around on government business. Yes. Is he employed by the government yes. to render his service? Yes, he is employed by the government. I did not believe that I could have been an effective minister without having my husband with me um, on this journey. And so I spoke to my prime minister. I spoke about my, my trepidations and everything else with respect to that job. And he did say to me, okay... Um, I will facilitate. And that's what a good prime minister does. He listens, he understands the dynamics of the situation, and he provides the support to make it happen. So my driver is a young man who was given, I say young man, he was given all his life of service to St. Lucia as well. He worked, he was a national athlete for a number of years, and one of the best athletes St. Lucia okay, had Ms. in 1980. I don't really want to, yes. to know about him. I, yes. I would prefer to know more about you. Yes, okay, my girl. Um, promises you, you, you made. You and the Prime Minister walked through the George Charles Boulevard yes. in 2016 and you made a number of promises to the people but none of those have been fulfilled and your government is actually in power. Well, hold a you, sec, my lady. Also, Ms. Belrose, um, I just want to know about the, the, the curfew, the, 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 the 3 p.m. curfew on, on, 
on Sunday and Monday. What 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 are your views on that and why why is that why is that curfew? I would like you to explain that yes. to me. And I also want to ask you, Ms. Bellrose, to tell us a little about the health system. What is happening in light of 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 the coronavirus and and, and there are so many complaints about uh, about the health system. The other thing I, I, I want to ask you um, as well is um, what are you doing in Castries East for the single mothers? People are hungry, Ms. Bellrose. What are you providing to them? What are you giving to those single mothers who, who have those children? Why isn't the internet at the Touche Park um, working to, to facilitate Sounds like I'm the representative. Kids because it used to be working, Ms. Bellrose. These are the things I want you to speak about. Thank yes. you. Very good. I, 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 I enjoy every question of yours. Um, and I just want to say uh, on, a, on a number of them, um, the first one, you talked about the Prime Minister and myself walked in the boulevard. I mentioned earlier that when you elect a government, you elect them on the basis of the policies and, 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 and programs that they set out. The people of Castries East categorically chose to reject the United Workers' Party. Just hold the line, Carla. Yes. yes, I'm saying the people of Castries East chose categorically to reject the United Workers' Party at the last election. Yeah. 11 other constituencies said to the United Workers' Party, yes, we want to build a new St. Lucia with you, we are on the road with you, and we'll be working with you. And so the government sought to invest in those communities where they bought into the philosophy and thinking, you understand, of the government. It's very important that a community buys into the vision. When the Prime Minister came in, we just did a tour of the constituency. We made no promises. No promises at all were made. Because I'm a community worker and I understand when you raise people's expectations, the challenge it can pose for you. So just we didn't make promises. Just before you go, Minister. Yes. The other thing, too, is that added to that, there is that dynamic. Yes. That um, while she's saying that certain things you could have done, mm -hmm. when um, you would have tried to intervene and do things, then you have the popular saying by the other side, you are selected and not elected. elected. And so, you, the, the, you know, there's well, interference. Even that, yeah, but interference even that, I'm not, I'm not even too worried about that because... The point I want to make yeah. is that um, when government tries to intervene in mm -hmm. opposition constituents, there's a lot of resistance. Right, right. Because they're saying that, you know, in terms of getting things done as well. Yeah, but, but, I, but, I, but I think the critical thing is people must understand that you selected Mr. Philip J. Pierre to represent you in cash disease. His job does not end on election day. His job is for five years. And so even if I had interest as a community person in the community, the representative of the constituency is Mr. Philip J. Pierre. And you know, Ricky, that's why... And he why, sits in Parliament. And he sits in Parliament, he no, talks... And he says, you go around your laptop. That, that says, is, gonna... Let me tell you something. Mr. Pierre has a responsibility to write to the government on any matter that he wants. He can't just go and speak and spoke and spoke. No. If you're representing the people, there is an issue in your constituency, you need to sit down, put pen to paper to the right person, and send it in to them. That's what representation is all about. And then you can show the people, look, I wrote to them. I wrote and I didn't get any support for the projects in the boulevard. I've written. You know, that's what you need to do. I've written and I've not seen anything. So he's the parliamentary rep and I never took that away from him. He is the rep for Castries East, not for Trina Bellrose. What for Trina Bellrose then does is to respond to the needs of the community when they come to me. That's what I do. And I do it very well. And so perhaps that's why there's a little shikha now. But the fact is, if you come to me, you get total quality service. You know, good quality service you get. So that's, let's make that abundantly clear. Mrs. Belarus is about servicing the people. Mr. Pierre had his responsibility to represent his constituency in every sphere of the world. You know? And having said that, though, when I wrote to Mr. Pierre, I wrote, well, my ministry, because we have to do projects in communities um, with respect to our portfolios. We would write to him, and of course he would support, generally support. So what I don't understand is why when he wants something done, he's not writing. He needs to write and make a statement, write to the prime minister, express your desire to see things happen. And then, of course, there's a process that one has to follow. But don't believe that you can just sit in a wild chair, you know, and, 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 and ask for things to be done and it should be done right away. No. It doesn't work that way. We live in a country with limited resources, and so one has to prioritize all times. And so it must be done in that way. At least that is my thinking, my understanding, you know, of the way the system works. Put pen to paper and let the people know that you have written, and not just written, written to the right person to make it happen.
some of the other issues. Want to address. Well, I think she talked about the, the, the coronavirus and the, and the timelines. Um, you would appreciate that the CMO and also the um, police commissioner was also on air speaking to the timelines. One of the things we observed during the Christmas season was that we were, we, we were lax in terms of the, of, of the times. And people found time to go and congregate and participate in all That's kinds of events, problem? which created, you understand, uh, you know, the, 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 the spread you know, of the virus. So in an effort to con um, curtail things and to ensure that we do not have a repetition of what transpired over the Christmas season, we've looked at all the issues, all the options, and felt that it was better, you understand, to, to close off at 3 o'clock on the Sunday and the Monday for Easter, you know, to limit um, the interactions of people across the country. Good night. Welcome, Gola. Yeah, good night, Ricky. Good night, Miss Fortuna Berros. Good, good night. I listened to that first caller, man, and I don't believe those people getting it. Why is she crying? She hungry. 25 years since <laughs> he represent this place. What he has done for Marsha? Nothing. You know, people still going in pit toilets and all kind of stuff like that. 25 years, you know. Deputy Prime Minister in the Labour Party, he had all the money in the world mm -hmm. to make Marsha look like a PT. Now he's in opposition. You're going to cry and tell me, Brad Rose, about hungry. <laughs> you should be ashamed, man. What people are looking for right now, what they couldn't get in 25 years, and the young lady is putting her kerchief in the ring to give proper representation. And I am totally, totally supporting her on that. Because candidates just come and they just not tell you what they're going to do. And Philip J.P.I. is one of them that wants to become Prime Minister. And he does not tell the entire nation, if I if I won this election, what I am going to do for St. Lucia, not for Cassidy, for St. Lucia. You know, this is a man that has no direction, man. He cannot govern. 25 years, you have never done anything for Marsha, man. And you're looking for another five years? I believe Philip J.P., you need to pack up and go, man. And give this young lady, Fortuna Bellows, a chance to prove herself to the people of Cassidy's East. And if she does not prove, the people have the power in the hand to take out her. Because enough is enough in this country. You know, most of those labor people that call in the show, you all are brainwashed and it's high time to get out of that. What you're looking for is to make Cassis eat, eat a better place. Stop going and look for those handouts and begging. I don't believe in that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carla. Well, I think the, 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 the caller is spot on, um, and, but she mentioned about single mothers, and I think one of the things we want to do to support single mothers um, in a number of areas the line, I mean, is the whole question of the provision of the centers, the daycare centers, um, and also another critical issue we realize is that many people cannot afford, um, and perhaps if there's one thing I think Mr. Pierre does is his, um, the food giving program, yeah. where he provides flour, rice, sugar, you understand, to people. So recognizing that, I think what the option we're coming up with is the creation of a community restaurant which would provide the three meals for persons but then they come in and give some community service you know with respect to you know they they, they getting their meals so we're working out the logistics of that kind of programming and of course we'll present it to them at a at a, at a later date but okay. we are cognizant of the fact that there are a number of people in need a number of persons just do not have jobs and given the covid environment we have people who are vulnerable we are working on trying to ensure that we provide a, a, a safety net insofar as the services of the meal, um, the, the three meals, you know, so persons can have that on a regular basis in the community. Thank you for holding caller. Welcome to Constituency Vibe. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? I am good. <coughs> good evening, Ms. Be Ms. Beryl. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Okay, it's nice seeing you on TV, and I, I, I don't usually call, but I had to call this evening. Okay, thank um, you. Let me, let me ask you. Well, we should forget about Philip altogether because um, it's a waste of time thinking about it. The Football Association, the FA, I, um, I, I, need, I just need to know, because I heard the, the President made a comment that um, he did not know he had to consult the Ministry of Sports. Uh, you were talking about sports earlier on, but I didn't catch anything. I, I started listening late. 
what is the position? Does the Ministry of Sport have any over sports have any oversight of the of the FA, or is it totally a totally autonomous body? It's it's a totally autonomous body, but I think it operates within the jurisdiction of Saint Lucia. So the government right. of Saint Lucia has has a responsibility for the creation of the environment for the development of sport. And the policies for sport are all through the government of Saint Lucia. From the government exactly, of Saint Lucia. Exactly, because we are spending in, the government of Saint Lucia mm -hmm. is spending millions on sports yes. at at the at the beginning stage of, of the sporting activities. And those same school school sporting people will go into the FA at some stage. Now, um, how how come the government had no idea what was going on with this guy's um, agenda? I, I think he got some five hundred thousand dollars, or the FA got some five hundred thousand dollars from the from the um, from the football association, the the the, the world body. FIFA, FIFA, yeah. From FIFA. From FIFA, yeah. 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 Well, and I, yeah. So what happened with that money and, and what, what is going on? Well, well, I think the Football Association would be in a better place to account for that. That is their, that is their, res, their responsibility. Okay, so the government would they, have no... The government has no jurisdiction over no the finances. Jurisdiction over That's that, right. Those. They have no jurisdiction over the finances, but as a good organization in a society, for example, I'm president of the Olympic Committee, what we do every year is we audit ourselves, and we present the government a copy of our audit. So they can go through that and see all what we've done, um, our finances, and how they, how, how they go. But in terms of interfering in our operations, the government has no responsibility. Um, in fact, okay. the IOC can easily suspend us if government ever becomes involved in the management of our business. That's right, yes. yes. Okay, uh -huh. I, I, I know that part. Yes, but, but, and it's the so same for football and FIFA. Okay. But what you, what you need now as leaders within the society is to have the synergy, um, the, the disposition to be talking to each other um, in terms of programming, etc. You need relationships for things yes. to succeed. Yes. So why, whereas the autonomous, um, the, the, the government of St. Lucia, along with the Football Association, works together in the interest of the sport. And so there, there, there is always need for dialogue and engagement, which is what we encourage. Okay. Yes. Um, another thing is the Marsha Boulevard. Yes. Uh, somebody called and, and, and made a, a set of pronouncements there and asked a number of questions that that should be addressed to Philip J. Pierre. Yes, he's the rep. He's yes. the representative. And yes. those questions, I, 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 I want to send a message to this person and tell him that these questions are better answered by Philip J. Pierre. That's right. He's the representative for, he's the one sitting in parliament. Mm -hmm. He's the representative for the constituency. And so all these questions are to be directed to him. Yes. If they want to direct those questions to you, then put you in parliament. That's right. So I can answer, and that's why and I'm here. Then, and then you will have a responsibility that's right. to answer, those, to answer those questions to them. Yes. Um, but uh, the serious, in a serious, on, a, on, a, on another note, the Marsha Boulevard was promised uh, a, um, sewage, a sewage system that would join the 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 Castro system many years ago, yes. many, many years and, ago. And I think um, Romana Slantico actually bought it up to a certain level. The distance from that public facility is probably about 40 yards from what I was told. And right. so for some reason, they, 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 they stopped the project. You know, talking about stopping projects, that was one the SLP stopped. You understand? And of course, it never happened. And it so never happened. It never happened. It never so happened. I thought there was a problem yes. in the logistics of it. I thought there was a problem with, with uh, space or something like there, that. There is no problem. But, it could but have I been understood done. there is no problem. There is no with problem. It. As it a matter of fact, been. the area where, where the pipe should go has have been demarcated. Yes, everything is all, was all set. And it yeah. was just stopped because it was a Lansico project. That's all. Oh, so when you hear fellas talking about stopping project and victimization and whatever it is, you know, out of the... Now, you know, I believe those kinds of issues must be brought up, not necessarily on platform, but it must be... St. Lucia must know mm -hmm. why is the boulevard in such a state uh, at this stage of our development. Yeah. It is the, 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 the fault of the current representative for the... East Castries constituency. Yeah, I, I, I cannot see any other reason for it. Yeah. Well, because they seem to stop everything that other governments want to do. That's right. And that was one of the stoppers, you know, and today that stop that stop that that, that stop project comes back to haunt you. You understand? And, and that's and I why I want to talk for my for some of my people of uh, Bocage. I just yes. want to say please visit the sick and shut in. There are a lot mm -hmm. of them of that side. Okay. And uh pay them a visit and um 
maybe a little hamper or something will will go well in in giving them some encouragement. Yeah. Thank you very much, and of yeah. course, we'll certainly do. And keep up the work that you're doing. I, I, I understood that you're very popular in that area. Yes, we've been connecting. Okay. We've been connecting, and I, I also want to laud the efforts of the caregivers program. The government has a caregivers program. Thank you very program. much, Akala. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, okay. the government has a caregivers program where we have the elderly um, being attended to um, by a number of women from the constituency itself. And we really want to commend them on the work that they're doing because they're doing great work, you know, keeping families together and supporting families. Good evening, caller. Welcome to Constituency Vibes. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, this is the Constituency Vibes, right? Yes, it yes. is. Go ahead, caller. You, right. You're most welcome. All right. Well, I live in the Cash Resist Constituency, so I would just like to find out from Ms. Fortuna because um, a lot of what she said um, I've never experienced it. What I can say is that she's maybe passed around on five times. I've never seen her done anything. So I'd like her to analyze <laughs> it. She keeps on saying that Pierre is not doing anything. Um, there's a whole bunch of things about what they're going to do. We're almost over five years and still nothing has been done. So please enlighten us as to what is going to be done. And just on a lighter note though, do you think that it would be feasible or even necessary to put a toilet in everyone's house, whereas a general facility has been provided, um, it's up to the residents of the community to upkeep it, in my opinion, because we need it. So why don't we take care of it ourselves rather than depending on the government? So if she's saying to put one in everybody's house, how do they plan to accomplish that? And what is the point of opening a restaurant? For people, what is she trying to um, downplay cash with these people as if no, no, we no. cannot go out and work for ourselves, that we are dependent on somebody? Because even if we are, you still haven't done anything within the past five years, <laughs> so you're just as useless as Philip if that's what you're trying to say. <laughs> on, this show, on this show, we want to be very no, careful no. when you make a point to please watch the language. No, let him. I think, I think this is yes. Language. Yes, but I think this is the culture, though. I think you, you, yes, you, the okay. parliamentary, rep, the parliamentary rep for the constituency is Mr. Philip J. Pierre. Yeah, Quite not Fortuna Bellrose. Your point. Right. Okay. So I just needed to make. I, I need to make no, that point very that clear. Now, as Minister for Culture. Representative, that you're not going to help us. No, 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 not at all. And brother, and brother, let me tell you all the things yeah. I've done. You want to hear all the things I've done? I don't go sing in my... Have you done? Cause I haven't seen anything. Brother, let me tell you what I've done. I've been okay. able to help Just at least... Just one you listen off air? Yeah. Thank okay. you very much, Carla. Yeah. Go I've been able to help a number of young people get employment, or people get employment in the cash resist area. Well over 60 persons got employment through my efforts um, in that constituency. Just hold the line a minute, In Carla. that constituency. We've been able to restore order at Marsha Grounds, Mindo Phillip Park. When we took over the Mindo Phillip Park in 2016, my government, as a sports person, it was an embarrassment to see the state of underneath the stands at Marsha Grounds. 365 bags of garbage were sitting underneath there, you understand, for the longest while. And we were able to clear that to make a statement. And to this day, you can go out there, Ricky, and you can eat your lunch underneath the stands. As we That's, know it. Yes, man. That is what we've been able to do. Simple, but effective. You know, we've been able to restore a number of little um, drains. In some communities, a drain was built, half a drain was built in, in front of a SLP, and, and in the middle where the flower boy is living, there's no drain, and on the side, the other SLP. We were able to bridge that gap and fill it off nicely. Simple things like that to create peace within our communities, we were able to do. My job was peacemaker in caste resist and making sure that everybody was happy. And that's why you see the reflections on the wall that we did. We were able to put a core of people there who were able to stabilize things on the ground. And when we put in the monument of um, the young man, Cassius Glasgow, it made a statement to the community that we cared. He lost his life, but he was given voluntary service. And we had to acknowledge and recognize that and bring order to the community in that way. So there are some basic things we've done, simple things, but very effective um, on the ground. In, a, in addition to assisting people in finding scholarships, their bursaries, universities, we've done, we've done work. We've welcome, done work. Welcome, caller. Welcome to Constituency Vibe. Thanks for holding. Yes, good night. Um, good night, sir, and good night to your guests, Mr. 
Belarus. Good night yes, and good welcome. Night. Yes, um, as a resident of Rockall and um, well, born there, live there, I have some concerns about um, when he once had a senior primary school, the Rockall Primary School. Mm -hmm. And um, that facility, even after the school was closed, the, it was never maintained. That school was, I mean, we had annexes there could, which could have served as a community center for the time being. We allowed that to go to the zero. Mm -hmm. I mean, although there were security guards there, but somehow the roof disappeared, the building disappeared, security guard remained. And um, I mean, there, there is no place to recreate for the community. Um, in terms of emergency, we have no community halls and so on. So, similar situation in Pavi or Menadil. Mm -hmm. We have um, over flooding of the river banks and, and the river walls not being done and so on. That has happened throughout my lifetime mm -hmm. at Rockall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what the, the facilities that were there deteriorated to zero. And that last call, I don't know what part of Castro is from. But obviously, it's not the same Castrosis with me, because what that guy said there is lost. I don't know where he's from. So I want to hear the um, Mrs. Bellers for yeah. that and what plants. I, yeah. Although I heard about the land, plants for the land at the Rock Hall School, this yes. area has been allowed to become what it should never have become. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I hope that serious steps are taken to address that. Yes. Thank you. Right. Yes. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, thank you, Paul. I think one of the fundamental issues we have in your area, too, is the whole question of the drainage, because eh? the river does um, the, quite a bit of damage um, to houses, you know, in the area. So the drainage is an issue that must be addressed um, within the Rockall area. And then the housing development, there is an area already earmarked for the housing. Um, I think the Minister of Housing has already spoken, you know, to the, the, the possibilities, you know, um, with respect to that area, and we'll be following up. Um, to make sure that happens for the people. So that's, that's another promise that we're making, you know, to the people with respect to housing. Both there and in Bagatelle area, we have to ensure that we address the land tenure issues, but importantly, the housing and the quality of housing that people live in. And it's not impossible to do it. You know, I mean, recently we did a, a, a program where we provided support for people with respect to changing their roof, the side of their homes, you know, and it seemed to be so temporary, you know, in this, in the, in this, in this society. Um, that you give people plywood for four years and then they come back at five years. You understand? I think we need to change this thinking um, and this mentality and find a different approach around the housing, you know, for our people. And so we'll be looking at some modular housing um, and hopefully we can affect some of that within the constituency of Castro East, you know, um, over time. Thank you very much for holding. Welcome, caller. Hi, good night. Good, good night. night. Um, I just wanted to call to give some clarification. Um, sorry, may I go ahead? Go, yeah, go ahead, Colin. Okay, so um, Ms. Bellero stated that they do little things based on cleaning garbage under the marshal staff. <laughs> the earlier caller wanted to know where I'm from. I'm from Bishop's Gap, just to let him know. So that's one. In cleaning under the stand, that's something which I know has been done for many years, mm -hmm. even us as residents mm -hmm. undertake that ourselves, especially when we have activities coming up. We undertake that ourselves. So as for her stating that she clean up how many bags of garbage, that's irrelevant. Because we can get that done. <laughs> She's stating that they've made little, little, little things. The only project that I do know of which was undertaken in Bishop's Gap is a wall. There's a little wall being a rugby river, how you'd like to call it, going down to Marsha. There was a contract given. In my opinion, if government took money out of their pocket to build that wall, and I wish I could show you a picture of it right now, then that was a waste of money because the wall is not mm. even anything substantial. It's only about, what, 13 feet, 14 feet long. I don't know what it was supposed to accomplish. So I'd just like to enlighten her and let her know. I've been looking at her movements and everything she's been doing. So we appreciate the lies that you continue to give. Mm. Color, 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 what's the language? Was, thank you. 
Yeah, I, I, I think, unfortunately, the, the call is misguided, and he might probably be one of those persons who paid to make those calls. So I, I can't continue with him. Welcome to Constituency Vibes, Gala. Hello, good, good evening. Good evening. Um, this gentleman does not understand Ms. Delroth was never the <laughs> parliamentary representative yes. for tax If he wants to say she's useless, let us do a term as a parliamentary rep. To find that out. You will judge her. Yeah. You have a parliamentary rep for 25 years. He was asked what was the highlight of his representation in Masha, in Kashyyyk, sorry. He said he was having lunch with Nelson Mandela. You go and question him, ask him, and ask him who is useless and who is not useless. If you want to call the lady useless, let her give her a term. If she does nothing, you will call her useless. But you cannot tell me you represent a community and a constituency for 25 or 20 or 25 years, and you cannot say, well, I built a house for Jacob, who was needed a house. It was going for lunch for, out of 20 years, three hours. Who is useless? And the lady who's talking about single mothers, Mr. Pierre has held a ministry every time he was elected, and substantial ministries like infrastructure. What happened? Mm -hmm. What happened? Well... Thank you, Caller, for those comments. And I think one of the things I've recognized... Thank you very much, Caller. Yes. Thank you, for, Caller, for those comments. One of the things I've recognized in Cash Resist, too, um, is in terms of the human relations and how, how, people, how people relate to each other. Um, and and, and, and you, find, you find within families, you have people who cannot express themselves properly. So I want to believe it was clearly perhaps him not being able to articulate what he really wanted to say. Um, that had him to make the statement, you know, of being useless. But clearly, somebody who have achieved as much as I have over the years. Um, I'm proud to be a solution. I'm proud of my accomplishments. Um, and I'm happy, you understand, um, to work with the people of Castro's East to ensure that we resolve a number of the issues that have been there, you know, pressing on them for the last, for the last 25 years. I'm prepared to work with them. Um, and I'm hoping that they can give me the opportunity because that's all I want, an opportunity so we can see how we can push this community, you know, to, to, to realize our dreams, you know, as citizens, you know, of that constituency. And that's the message. Welcome, yes. Paul. Hi, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Mrs. Delrose. Yes, good evening. Um, I have two questions for you. Um, of lately, I've been seeing a lot of videos on social media mm -hmm. um, involving the wardens taking people's goods that they're trying to sell and you see some of them fighting the people and a whole host of other things. I wanted to know what were your views on that and if your government plans on doing something to assist those people because from what I see they're trying to make an end meet and you know the wardens keep collecting this stuff so what exactly is being done and is there any training in place for the warden in terms of um, handling people especially those that probably have a mask on or because I have a problem with the mask. I can't wear it mm -hmm. as often as probably you. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is in place to train those wardens or what's your plan on doing about that? And the other question, I wanted to know because I know we bought on the 50 already and we do not have a deputy speaker. So I wanted to know your views <laughs> on the fact that the law says we need to have a deputy speaker and it is something that has been on my mind for a while. I want to hear your views on the fact that we we have parliament and we do not have a sitting deputy speaker. Thank, thank you very much, Carla. Clearly, but, clearly we can see that the attempt to, to, to divert you... No, um, well, it's okay, because, because from, I know there is from, no law that says there must be a deputy from the, speaker. From, from the message. Yeah, you know there, there, there is no law that so, says there must be so, a deputy speaker. If there was a law saying there must be a deputy speaker, then we would have addressed that a long time hold ago. Call, call. Hold so, a minute, call. Yeah, but there's no law that says there must be a deputy speaker. So that's one. That should be off. But I think in terms of the other point she made around the, around the, um, the, the how you call them, the wardens, um, I think one of the critical things there is always orientation and training. And so perhaps there might have been gaps in the training that was offered to them. Um, and again, when people come into organizations, they come into, in, into jobs, they come in with their own inherent, their own understanding and thinking of it. Um, and so they might be need to review the orientation program, you know, that they go through and perhaps put them continuously, you know, on training programs that will assist them in improving the relationship, you know, that they have, 
you know, with the citizenry that they're supposed to be serving. But and I think it's a, it's a point that, that needs to be looked at. And your government. Welcome, Carla. Yes. Welcome to the Constitution. Welcome. Good night, Ricky. Good night, Mrs. Bellrose. Good, good night. I'm good. good. I'm good. Well, I have a comment to make. It looks like the, the, the liver rights are calling all the time. Yes, they, they're trying to derail Ms. Bellrose, but that's oh, not no. going to work. That's not yes. going to work. Mrs. Bellrose, I am very proud of you. Thank you. I think you have the fire in your belly. But you ain't seen nothing yet, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, though. Yes. I think you're going to burn me. Okay. But and I, I am proud of you that um, you have... Uh, uh, slowly outline the, the, your, what you want to do for the constituency and uh, you have a lot of empathy mm -hmm. okay I don't know what you to do with you I want you to come there and do what you have to do and my lady what I want you to do is to bring home the seat for, for you to I want you to take the baton from Lanchico and run with it, okay? Now, the other question, the other question I want to ask you, please, 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 do not let anybody encourage you to make any stupid comment about the Football Association. No. <laughs> because you will not be trapped. Yes. What they want you to do is to be, is trap yourself so that Philip J. Pierre could say what he wants about you. <laughs> Well, that, well, if you know me works. well, that, yeah, these things don't bother me, you know. I, I don't no. think you'll understand the metal I'm made of, you know. <laughs> no, no, I, I think I'm, I'm getting to know you. I'm getting yes, to know yes, you. Yeah. Now, yeah. the other question I have is, what about the play pen, the, the game, the, 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 how they call it, play pack he built right in front after the bridge there? He complaining that nobody... You, you didn't give him money to maintain it, uh, UWP. All lot of nonsense and excuses. <laughs> but you hate hey, nonsense and you're asking me about it? No, no, no. Uh, if you know anything about it, let us No, I don't know. I know the, the, oh. the facility. In 2008, the okay, world... Well, that's good. Yeah. In oh, in thank you, Carla. Yeah. In 2008, the world observed the International Year of the Child. And I know that um, the government had commissioned a and small team. Line, the government had commissioned a small team to look across the country to see where we could have laid um, recreational parks for children, small parks for children. Um, I know Guy Mears was part of the. Um, he was in the Ministry of National Security at the time and was working towards the establishment of a park somewhere in the Marsh area. But when Mr. Pierre came in, um, I think he completed and did that park in in in, in the area. Um, but when a park is done, when a facility is, is, is built, um, the, the Castri City Council is the agency, really, that is supposed to be taking on public space, you know, within, within the city area. Um, I'm not sure what happened there, but there seemed to have been a misfit in terms of the arrangements. And to this day, I think somebody from the community authorized by Mr. 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 Pierre holds the keys for that place. So it seemed to be a personal um, 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 thing as opposed to a community mm facility and only selected people you know would get to go in inside of that inside and outside of that place so and we have to look at yeah we have to look at the dynamics of that but if, in my government um, if we do get in office all of these things will be revisited and of course we will make the changes that need to happen within in addition to that also looking at the space and trying to see that is really the best location for a park given the fact that you have the river um, and you also have the the, 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 the filth of the river you know, coming through in terms of the stench and the smell, you know, um, with kids playing, you know, in the area. So one has to look at all of those issues, you know, with respect to the environment, you know, and the children being there, you know, as well. So I don't know, but um, it's really his park. He should talk about it. Welcome to Constituency yeah, Vibes, Caller. Good night. Thanks for holding. The Caller mentioned about, about the deputy speaker. There is a constitution, okay? Nothing overrides the constitution. No habit, no culture, no convention. The constitution, the leader of the opposition and the government, it's a collective. They are both accountable. They, it's their responsibility to, to, to choose a deputy speaker, not the government. It's the law says an elected parliamentarian. That's what it is. So don't come with your, 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 your tricky questions about, like, you'll expect it is the government. The government does not have... 
the right to appoint, appoint a, a, a deputy speaker. It's the elected parliamentarians in the parliament. He's right. Okay, so it's not the government's responsibility only. Yeah. It's a collective agreement. That's correct. That's what it is. So stop coming if you're really about, about it always happens, the government always. That's not what, that's convention. That is not constitution. The constitution is what all, what stands. Yeah. Well said, and, 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 and the thing is, Scholar, I think, you know, you have to look at both parties need to work together to resolve that issue. You know, yeah, um, a, we, you know but, some people just like to blame and blame and blame. Come together. Come to a resolution. That's what the people want. The resolution. People don't you know? talk about convention. Yes. Convention doesn't override the constitution. Absolutely. The constitution says it's the responsibility of the of 17 this, mm -hmm, parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not the government. Yeah. Point well made. All right. Good evening, Carla. Point well made. See, I couldn't even make it that way. That's what I mean. I said, like, I'm not a good speaker. But there he goes. <laughs> Welcome to Con Constituency Vibes, Carla. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good night, um, Ms. Rosa, to speak in the house, can you? Oh, good evening, my dear. Good evening. How are you? I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I started like to see uh, Bruce, a uh, person with vision, with green statistics. And we will win that seat. You see that seat? That is ours. Because you're somebody who's working hard, you don't do it with everybody, you're not watching no big news, but then you have to work everybody getting a bread from you. But then the other side, you have to work with it, but you're not watching that. But you are great in there for cutting it. And we're getting that seat as much as we can recognize. Thank you very much, and I'm humbled by that. By that, I think what we need to do is to Thank continue. Thank you very much, Carla. Yes, and what we need to do is to continue to work together. I think the feedback has been good. The people have been responding well, um, and we just hope that we can work together to bring it home, you know, um, for the United Workers Party. And that's what it's all about, bringing it home for the United Workers Party to make a difference in the lives of people so that we can put people to work, we can ensure that the community is transformed, and all the basic things that should have happened for them, you know, 25, 20, 10, 15 years ago, is addressed in the community once and for all. We have a commitment to that, and we will do it. You're on to Constituency Vibes 93.1, and of course we are... How time flies, huh? amazingly. Was it time? Yes, it's almost 10 o'clock, so we get into okay. the wrap-up time. And of course, Mrs. Bellows, speak away to the people, and your closing remarks. And that. Yeah, I just want to say to the people of Castries, this all I need is an opportunity. Um, and I guess when you, when you, if you are a mother and you have children, all you need to do is to give them opportunity. Provide the environment for them to grow, and flourish. We have a party in the United Workers Party that is the best party that Sinusha ever has. It is the only party that fulfills its mandate for the people of this country. And what I want is to be that person within the constituency that can help for the work for the transformation of the community of Castries. Castries has remained the same for many years. We need to see something different. We need to see something reflecting who we are in this constituency. It's a constituency that has produced brilliant people. It's a constituency that has produced a number of sportsmen and women. It's a community that has produced great men and women, you know, um, um, from its bosoms. And we need to be able to restore that pride and bring it home. We need to be able to remove that stigma, you understand, that hangs around the constituency. It can be removed because we have what it takes to make it happen. We have people there who are capable of making it happen. And I want that opportunity to be able to do it. In sports, I've led groups and transformed groups, winning groups. I think with this community and the vibe that I feel on the ground, we have what it takes to make it happen for the people of Castries. And so all I ask is for an opportunity. That's all we ask, an opportunity to go into the future as, a, as opposed to looking backwards. We need to look forward, and that's where we are headed. Thank you very much, and this is where we have we end constituency vibes. Good night. The mighty truth is the left lad that can kill Kakuya, can try affect him, can can try derail no sapak I felt absolutely. We are steadfast. We are focused. You know, I know Sky FM is getting very popular. Yeah. They try to infiltrate our shows. They try to call if all the negative comments. The people are ready. They are ready for Miss Bellrose. They are focused. Change is coming to cast resist. Yes, and of course. A tr total transformation under the vision and leadership of the United Workers Party. Um, with Ms. Bellrose being the new member of parliament for Castries is headed by Prime Minister Shastney and the rest of the team, we are transforming St. Lucia constituency by constituency. 
once again. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, um, um, Ricky, for, for being here. And I just want to say to the people, you know, that we, we, we must have faith and we must believe. And remember, there is a God above who sees and knows all things. And we believe in him. Our faith is strong. My faith is strong, you know, and I'm confident, given your support, that we will be able to make the difference in Castries um, that we would want to. We have great leadership in the country. Castries East doesn't want to sit out of government. Castries East deserves to be inside of government, you understand, to continue to transform in the way that it should. And when I look at the number of young men and women who are unemployed in the community, there is so much that can be done, but we need to be on the inside. We cannot reject government and expect things to happen for us. We need to ask the government to come in, work with us, you know, to realize the goals that we want for our community. Let us accept the government with ease, and we will see the transformations that will come. There you have it. You heard from Mrs. Fortuna Barrows, your candidate and your next member of parliament for Castries East. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for our callers. Thank you, viewers, indeed. Once again, good night. Look at you, 
with me, your host, Ricky Alexander, every Wednesday on Sky FM 93.1 from 8 p.m. My MP said that we would have a new wellness center. Here we are. It's almost finished. My community said we needed a new wing to our secondary school. And my MP said yes. My sister said she needed help to find a job, so my MP created a job fair. Our athlete said we needed better sporting facilities. A new early childhood development center. My neighbors said. My sister said. The children said. The community said. Road and a new park. And my MP said. Yes. 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 Of course. Nous tout se yon fami an mi kout nod. An nou kontine pou fè po gwe ek anti gil. Mi kout nod family. Mamay mi kout nod. Tune in to GVD TV 115 and Facebook Live this and every Tuesday for Let's Talk with Auntie Gail, where we will discuss what is happening in our constituency and the progress we have made so far. Anu pale epi Auntie Gail, to le madi asu GVD TV channel yon yon sec. Mi kudnof, we've got this. Let's talk. Nous tous, c'est Yon Fami, un Mikudno. Crossfire, discussing the issues. Norbert Williams, Champagne, Dr. Secret, and Ring the Bell. Thursdays, 8 p.m. on Sky FM and GVD TV. Don't you miss it. <laughs> My mother sent us back. Sent us out of his purpose to give us something. Still good. Uh, things were very difficult with my parents, and my mother opened a small bakery in the Castries area. Because my father would do everything he could have do for me. Not for himself, for me, mm -hmm. personal. And from there, when I see my from there yesterday, and I just remember my mother and my father every day, how they take it so hard to bring us up. And I seen from today there, I have to disable children from mother. The mother has some freedom, the woman has freedom, you know. 